Dependency injection, one of the most confusing topics for a beginner programmers. Watch this video until the end and I'm going to turn this topic into a piece of cake. Dependency injection or a DI is a design pattern which is used in a software development for improving the quality and the maintainability of your code. In this short video I will try to explain you what it is, how it works and why you should use it. Dependency injection is a way of structuring your code so that uh, it's easier to maintain, test and modify it over time. Its main purpose is to reduce the coupling between different components in your code. That uh, practically means that uh, instead of creating and managing objects directly within your code, you delegate that responsibility to a separate component which is called dependency injection container. And then that container takes care of creating and managing all of your different objects that your code needs, allowing you to focus on writing the code that actually does the work. So classes often do require references to other classes in order to work. In this example right here, you can see that we have a simple PC class that has a function to turn on the computer. And to achieve that, we need a motherboard among other different things. But that motherboard is uh, created and instantiated right from our PC class, which means there is no any dependency injection here. In the real world scenario, uh, this uh, code right here would mean that we have bought a PC with a locked case. And if something bad happens, or if we decide after 10 years that uh, we want a different uh, model of the motherboard, we wouldn't be able to swap and change that component because a PC case is locked. That the same goes with the code. So we have decided what kind of a motherboard uh, we want to use and we are basically using that a single model of that a motherboard without an option to change that motherboard to fit our needs. With this implementation uh, those two classes are uh, tightly coupled and uh, no subclasses or uh, alternative implementations can easily be used. So that's where dependency injection comes in. With a dependency injection, uh, we would change this uh, code by removing the instance of this motherboard class from the PC class itself and moving that class inside the constructor instead. That way, uh, when uh, constructing the PC class, we would have an option to customize uh, what kind of a motherboard we want to construct with a PC rather than using uh, only a single one. And that would make our code a lot more testable and maintainable. And also we would easily replace that uh, real motherboard uh, with a fake one just to test our PC class. So there are a number of different ways to implement dependency injection in your code, uh, but the most uh, common one is uh, called a constructor injection. So in a constructor injection, Injection, uh, dependencies uh, of a component are passed uh, in a parameter of that uh, actual class and one of the other popular ways uh, to use dependency injection is uh, through a field injection because for example a certain uh, Android uh, framework classes such as activities and fragments are uh, instantiated by the system itself so the constructor injection is not possible and that's where field injection comes into play. Now all of that code that you have previously seen was an example of a manual dependency injection. We have managed those dependencies of different classes on our own without relying on a library. Now there are popular libraries out there that can help you automate and handle those uh, dependencies like a dagger, dagger hilt, coin and others. You could also use a dependency injection technique manually by yourself, but that would be an overkill and a waste of time since there are already wheels that were invented for that purpose. And there are no reasons why you shouldn't use them. My suggestion is use those libraries because there is a huge documentation and a community that supports and maintains those same libraries. So if you stumble on some error, you will probably find a solution very easily. And that's it. It's not that hard, right? So uh, comment down below and let me know what you think about the things that I have said in this video. And also be sure to like this video, but only if you find it helpful. For this video, that'll be all.